Well, congratulations, Adam and Cheryl. I have always wanted to do a cooking show, and for your sakes, I'm finally doing it. So, welcome to my first and only cooking show, The Husband's Secret to a Happy Wife. Adam, you will notice that I have assembled the ingredients you've seen many times as you visited with us. So tonight we will be doing a cooking show to make sure you never forget how to make no bakes. We have here our sugar, peanut butter, milk, vanilla, cocoa, oats, and butter. Please make sure you have all seven of your ingredients before beginning because I found out tonight that if you don't have them here, it's very much more difficult. So what do we start with? Well, we need a pan. I think this is about a two quart pan, I don't know, somewhere large enough to make sure you contain the boiling ingredients. Start off with one stick of butter. That's right, you don't even need to measure it. You just find a stick of butter and you plop it into your quart pan. You should know I've, of course, washed my hands before handling all of this, so you should prepare to do that too. That's part of the husband's secret to a happy wife. Now, of course, you turn the burner on that is under your pan, not the other ones. That would be dangerous. And you turn it on to, normally it measures about six on most stove tops. If you don't have it with measurements, you just go one or two measurements up from halfway. Begin melting your butter. Now, you'll see that I have two spoons here. The reason will become more clear as we go on. but. You take the first and you begin to make sure that the butter is spreading around. In the meantime, while the butter is beginning to melt, I would take out something like this and set your oats aside in it. The reason you will want to have your oats set aside is so that you only need to use one cup measure because otherwise you'll have more cleanup. This is part of your happiness, Adam, is less cleanup unless you're leaving that for Cheryl, which would not be part of the secret to a happy wife. That's two and a half cups of oats that you set aside. As the butter is melting, I'll just set that back here. We're done with the butter. Moving right along. Now this part's, you know, not the most exciting part, but it is always joyfully fun to see tons and tons of fat turning into liquid so that it can someday join sugar and cocoa and taste delightful. Just make sure that it doesn't get too hot and start boiling and that's basically why you keep pushing this stick of butter around is to keep all the butter from sitting in one place for too long and overheating. While you're doing that you can take a little break here and there. Take your half cup measure and pour yourself some milk. You will be adding milk as soon as the butter has completely melted. Keep the stirring up though. You don't want to take too long away from the main goal here is keeping everything in the right heat balance. Now I called this episode the uh, husband's secret to a happy wife. That can go in many ways. If you're having a good day, well, this can make the day better. If you're having a bad day as a couple, which believe it or not, it will happen now and then, why, just pull out these simple seven ingredients with this simple recipe, and in less than 15 minutes, you should have a happy wife unless she's accusing you of trying to make her fat, which I don't know how to respond to that one yet, Adam, so I can't give you any hints there. So you pour in your milk, and then you grab two cups of sugar, and you add them. And then you add three tablespoons of cocoa. And then you can start stirring again. I hope you have a TV in your kitchen so that you can watch me every time you make no bakes. I'm sure that would make your lives just much more pleasant. Take your spoon and mix that all up. 
you're beginning to see the chocolatey goodness. Now we've combined butter and milk and sugar with cocoa. Just try and mix all the powdery cocoa in. I wouldn't worry too much about it because once this stuff comes to a boil, there's nothing that's not going to be mixed in. It'll all be mixed in. But for now, just try and stir those things in. Make it as smooth as possible. I don't know why I don't do more cooking shows. I'm obviously very good at it. Probably because I only know one recipe. Now the nice thing about this recipe is that if you set this spoon down, even though you don't have a place to set the spoon that's supposed to be a spoon catching place, if you will work quickly to clean up right after you're finished, this stuff will come right up, no problem whatsoever. So you leave the heat setting the same and you get your, um, you get your timer ready for a two minute time and you're watching until it begins to boil. In the meantime, you take your wax paper and you make sure that you've got enough space on the counter for some cookies. I am really disappointed that I won't be able to be down there at your wedding, so I just had to find some way to make sure that I was communicating that I love you guys, and this just was one of our favorite activities together, Adam, so I couldn't think of a better way than this. Now, let's talk about some of the um, advantages of no-bakes over other formed forms of, of desserts. I love brownies. Don't get me wrong, they're, they're probably my favorite dessert if I'm making a dessert for myself. But say that you're making a dessert for guests, for company, but you want to have some, or to give away even, but you want to have some. If you make brownies and you, you have them in that 13 by 9 inch pan and you give the person the 13 by 9 inch pan, it will be very obvious if there is a brownie or two missing. However, if you make no bakes, you can eat a couple and still look like a very generous friend. It's beginning to boil here. Zoom in a little and you can see that it's not quite all the way across, so I'm not beginning my time quite yet. Now you don't want to wait too late to begin your time because as this liquid evaporates, the cookies will get drier and drier and drier. So it's beginning to look fast, so I'm going to go ahead and start my time. And while the time is going, I'm not going to stir it at all. I'll put the sugar away. Don't need that anymore. Begin the cleanup. Put the milk away. The butter. I mean, seriously, you're almost done already. You already have your oats set aside. You can put your cocoa away. You have two ingredients left that you haven't already measured, your peanut butter and your vanilla. Peanut butter, if you just take that same half cup measuring cup that you used for the milk and spoon some peanut butter into it, the nice thing is that the milk will, the milk that's left in the cup, not much of it, but what's left in the cup will make it easier to get the peanut butter out quickly later. Yes, I've done this way too many times. So the peanut butter is ready to go. I've got 51 seconds to go. I get my vanilla ready. It's going to go in before either the oats or the peanut butter. And it's going to be two teaspoons of vanilla. But you wait until the time is all done. 30 seconds to go. I mean, this is about as easy as you can get for a dessert, seriously. That's why, even though I called it the husband's secret to a happy wife, it's really the husband's secret to a happy husband. I mean, if you're having a bad day, if your wife's away, you have nobody there who can cook for you, and you're not very good at it yourself, which you probably are, but, you know, just saying, most of us guys aren't quite as good as the ladies in our lives. This is a fast way to happiness. This is a fast way to forgetting all your woes. There goes my timer. So swap it over to a cooler 
burner. Add my two teaspoons of vanilla. Makes it bubble kind of funny. Set that aside. And oats first. The oats will create the necessary friction for the peanut butter to get mixed in well. If you put the peanut butter in first, it's sometimes harder to deal with the oats later. So, there we go. From here, it's just mixing it up. And I think you probably noticed, but I'm using the other spoon. I started using this spoon once I was measuring the peanut butter because the first spoon was all chocolatey and that wouldn't look good in your peanut butter jar. That would not be the husband's secret to a happy wife. You might find an angry wife if she found that you had left chocolate all over one of the key household ingredients. So once it's all stirred, there's a reason that there's wax paper out here. And you just take it a spoonful at a time. Seriously, you can make these as little or as big as you like. I like using the larger spoons because it helps me get through them more quickly. Keep them fairly close together unless you have a really long countertop.